Irma, a Category 5, the most powerful Atlantic hurricane ever seen. Puerto Rico slammed with a one-two punch. Maria made landfall early Wednesday. Puerto Rico's ailing electricity grid is still recovering from Hurricane Irma. This time, power could be out for months. It sounded like a very long, noisy freight train going by for 28 hours. Inside the house, you could not hear anything. Surfing was, I think, meaningful for people during that time as, as just a respite from the incredible pressure they felt to try and somehow climb out of this hole that had been created by this massive hurricane. Fortunately, the waves were really good right after the hurricane for two or three weeks. It's a bit ironic that that's the way it works, but that's the way it worked. With the aftermath of the hurricane, everyone needed water to drink and to bathe in and to cook with and the rest of it. There was no water, and so everybody had to find fresh water sources. Now the work we do at the Blue Water Task Force has a big impact on the community, of course. Very meaningful to me personally because it gives us a tool to monitor and help protect the coral reefs here at the Reserva Marina Tres Palmas. And in a more general sense, it gives us a payback to the community for all the support they have shown us over the years. This effort to give them accurate and timely information about water quality in the beaches that everybody is swimming and snorkeling and surfing at. If the chapter and the community members that were involved in it were not out there verifying water quality at these various wells and springs that people were using, literally there would have been no information, no way that the people would know if this water was suitable for household use. The site is called the Ojo de Agua. It is about three, four hundred meters from the town plaza, the center of Rincón. This was the place that pretty much everybody in the town center had to come get their water. Sometimes trucks would pull up that had, you know, water tanks in the back of the truck and take it up off into the hills to distribute. The Blue Water Task Force was very, very important in the water testing with our community because a lot of us were sourcing our water from local springs and once they would test to let us know what was safe for us all to consume. It was huge for the whole community and the island as well. The Rincon chapter of Surfrider, you know, we have an office where our lab equipment is, but that was totally unusable after the storm due to water damage. People from the Relief Center took me over to the Costa Salud Community Health Center, our, our local nonprofit health center, and they have a massive diesel generator. So they very kindly gave us our own separate room and we brought the equipment from the office over to the Costa Salud, set it up. And then the RBC Maria Relief, which provided the bulk of the actual manpower, the grunt work behind us of going out and getting the samples. One thing that really floats to the top after this whole ordeal with the hurricane is the value of a citizen science program or a community-based science program like the Blue Water Task Force in Rincón, because we were able to switch over to doing something we had never done before, no other agency had done before, within a couple of weeks after the storm. Whereas any sort of vague agency response only started happening after several months. The work obviously is far from over, and we're very grateful for the support that allows us to keep the Blue Water Task Force effort going in Puerto Rico.